Hello everybody. I trust you are all safe and well. The safeguarding and counselling teams here at college are available if you need to contact us. We like to be useful, even when we're all working remotely. Talking of useful, that's what we hope you'll get from these podcasts. Something useful. Applying some mindfulness techniques to life under lockdown. The theme for this week's podcast is sleep and I have got some ideas and two exercises that I want to share with you. But, as I've said before, these types of mindfulness exercises or visualisations are very personal. If you don't find my two offerings very useful, there are many, many others available on the internet. Give them a try. Before we go to sleep, I have a question. Are you having lockdown dreams yet? And if so... Are yours the pessimistic, apocalyptic, we're all going to die sort of dreams? Or are you the optimistic, things can only get better type dreams? Perhaps your dreams are filled with dark images of death and despair. Or the very light images of rainbows and people hugging one another again. We have a very complex organ in our head that is continually trying to make sense of our world whilst we're awake and whilst we're asleep. Only when we're asleep, we tend to be a bit more creative, a bit more abstract in the images that we use. This is a classic time for vivid dreams as we're all under pressure. You know, we've got to keep away from one another, we've got to abide within new rules, try to find a new normal. One of the things that I've experienced as taking the power out of really negative dreams is to talk about them. Talk with friends, talk with family, talk with a counsellor. can be really good to, to get the energy out of the dreams. And even if you're having optimistic dreams, it's good to talk about them. Share a little something, brighten somebody else's day. Right then, let's go to sleep. I've got two exercises that I intend to, that are intended to help you sleep. Two visualizations that take the energy right down. It can help you just slip gently into sleep. I'm going to save one of the exercises for the end of today's podcast, but I want to talk you through the other one now. So get yourselves comfortable as if you're preparing for sleep, so that might might well be lying down. Make sure everything's uncrossed. might want an extra cushion or, or move a limb or stretch your back, just ensuring that you're as comfortably as you possibly can. And then gently allow your eyes to close. And just begin to allow yourself to relax, letting all your cares and worries go. This moment in time, nothing matters as you switch off your thoughts, ready for sleep. Just allow this time so that you're going to unwind completely. As you begin to feel more and more relaxed, you let go of any worries or problems that have been on your mind lately. They'll be there when you wake up. If they should drift in and interfere, let them go, they'll soon drift out. I'd like you to take a few deep breaths, slowly filling your lungs with fresh air. And then as you exhale, as you breathe out, you'll relax more and more. Never hold your breath. Breathe in deep and fresh. Breathe out, relaxing and letting go. In and out in and out. Allow your breathing to return to its natural, gentle rhythm. You're starting to feel more and more relaxed, more and more comfortable. Feel your whole body sinking as it relaxes more and more, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Allow the muscles of your eyes and jaw 
to become limp and relaxed, your tongue gently resting on the bottom of your mouth. You're beginning to drift down, deeper and deeper, feeling more and more relaxed with every word I speak. Allow this wave of relaxation to spread down your neck and shoulders and all the way down your arms and into your fingers. You may feel a tingling sensation in your fingertips as your arms grow heavy, heavy as lead, and you are becoming aware of a growing, peaceful feeling inside, a feeling of calm and contentment. And then let the wave continue across to the muscles of your chest and your tummy, becoming limp and relaxed. All the muscles of your back are letting go, almost like a mental massage. All the way down your spine, those muscles are loosening and relaxing as you drift down deeper. Let the wave of relaxation spread all the way down to your legs. Every muscle in your legs becoming limp and relaxed. So that you're completely relaxed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. The outside world fades more and more into the background. Any negative thoughts and feelings fade any sounds around you fade. You're focused on my voice and a sense of calm relaxation. Your body is resting. Your emotions are quiet. Your thoughts are calm as you prepare for sleep. Perhaps you are still with me. Perhaps it's now tomorrow morning. Either is fine. For now, I've got a bit of chat, some recommendations, and then another exercise to share. We have to remember that sleep is an essential fuel. Like oxygen, food or drink, sleep is a time for the body to restore itself, for the muscles to rest, for the systems of the body to reset themselves. Therefore, we really need to be making sure we have enough sleep and that it is of the quality that we need. It's important for us to keep in our awareness the amount of sleep we need on a regular basis and try to organise our routines to accommodate this. We all know how much sleep we need, even those of us who do try to push it with an all-nighter on the candy crush or watching back-to-back -back episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Over the years, many people have shared with me their difficulties with sleep, and also the things that they have found helpful when trying to get to sleep, or if they wake up in the night. Without breaking any confidentiality, I want to share some of those tips here. Reading is probably top of the list whilst trying to get to sleep. Reading can be very useful, but not the latest thriller or an engaging romance. These are far too stimulating. Reading something dull is much more conducive to sleep, something that's not particularly engaging. Or perhaps reading a story that you know really, really well so that you can pick it up or put it down at any point. Nothing that's going to get you too thoughtful. Another tip that regularly comes up is having a bath with some essential oils as part of bedtime routine. The oils like lavender and neroli are the ones that are often recommended for relaxation, but you will know the aromas that work for you if you're into that sort of thing. During these difficult days, why not give yourself the time to have a nice, long, relaxing bath? 
see if it helps you. Another tip would be playing word games in your head. So the sort of games that I'm thinking of are things like going through the letters of the alphabet, thinking of a three letter word for each letter, then a four letter word and then a five letter word, etc. Or um, think about all the words that, rem that rhyme with the word hair or dart or went. Simple, repetitive word games that can help you put down your concerns and worries of the day and just get you into a calmer place for, for sleep. Another way that we do this, and this is one that I do, is making a list for tomorrow so that you can put down the things that are on your mind. They'll be there on the list for tomorrow. Maybe worth keeping the list by your bed in case you think of anything whilst you're preparing for sleep or when you wake up in the night. Or perhaps you have a particular visualisation that works for you. Some of the ones that have been shared with me over the years are things like thinking of a colour and then preventing it from taking any form. Or imagine making a film of a story that you know really, really well. Or the classic counting sheep, but counting sleeping sheep to help take the energy down. I have an app recommendation, and again, this is one that lots of people have spoken to me about, and it's Headspace. Um, it has lots of content, even the free version has lots of content, lots of mindfulness stuff, lots of stuff on sleep. I particularly like the sleep stuff. I've only just uh, recently downloaded it, um, but there's some smashing stuff. The sleep casts, I think, are particularly lovely. They're like uh, bedtime stories for grown-ups. OK, I'm going to sign off before the last exercise, as I want to finish the podcast with the exercise and leave you sleeping soundly. Remember, the safeguarding and counselling teams, if you feel that we can be useful during these difficult times, contact details are on the website. I hope that you all have pleasant dreams. So until next time, stay safe and well. For our second exercise, I have another visualisation to help you fall asleep. So, get yourselves ready for sleep, as comfortable as you can. Check that all your limbs are in the right place, ready for sleep. And close your eyes and just concentrate on my voice. Your body is a ten-storey building. In it, there is a lift. The lift is currently on the 10th floor, at the top of your head. I want you to imagine it descending slowly through your body. So it's on the 10th floor and it's going to descend slowly. To the ninth. You are allowing yourself to have a real rest. To the eighth floor. Allow yourself to sink down with the lift. To the seventh floor. Feeling really relaxed and comfortable. To the sixth floor. Your breathing is soft and gentle. To the fifth floor, allow your tummy to relax and expand. To the fourth floor, soft eyes, gentle smile, open heart. To the third floor, allow yourself to absorb refreshing, renewing energy. To 
to the second floor, relaxing and refreshing. To the first floor, you've got that rested weekend feeling. To the ground floor, all is well with the world. And into the basement, where you enjoy a good sleep. <laughs> 